Thanks to 1-800-Flowers for sponsoring this update. You can order beautiful flowers for a loved one right from your browser and have Valentine's Day sorted. Get 12 multicolored roses for just $19.99 or double the flowers for an extra $10 at 1-800-Flowers.com slash no. Welcome to The Know, I'm Ashley. Some PlayStation gamers had just a bit of a problem getting connected this weekend as PSN suffered from outage issues, which normally isn't that huge of a deal. Both PSN, Xbox Live, everyone has outage issues sometimes, except this was the third time in the last week. For a better part of the weekend, gaming and social services were interrupted, meaning some players couldn't launch games or applications, as well as PlayStation Now or their account management functionality, which as we get increasingly digital, becomes a bigger and bigger problem. Fortunately, it's back in business as usual on PSN now with all services restored, just in time for more of that Monster Hunter and Dragon Ball Fighters. Okay, I'll stop saying z. And speaking of both of these games, they each had enormous launches this weekend. Capcom announced today that Monster Hunter World shipped 5 million copies in its first few days, making it the fastest selling Monster Hunter title of all time. And that's just the opening weekend. Also note, they do say shipped, not sold, but that's still a lot of copies. The total brings the series up to 45 million in its lifetime. Unfortunately, Xbox One players have had a little bit of a problem with multiplayer connectivity in that game, Capcom confirmed, but fortunately there is a fix for players on the way and a bit of a workaround in the meantime. We'll include a link for that in the link dump. Dragon Ball Fighters also had a big weekend, though not quite as big. However, the game moved enough units on PC to already become the biggest fighting game on Steam ever. The game peaked at north of 44,000 concurrent players in its first few days, putting it far beyond the competition. The next highest peak was Tekken 7 at 18,000. Unsurprisingly, both Monster Hunter World and Dragon Ball Fighters also topped the UK charts this weekend at number one and number two, respectively. We'll see if this is just a one weekend success story or if the games continue to hold on to these spots. They're both great games, they're both doing very, very well, so I think they'll keep it a little bit, but that's just me. There have been tons of discussion about last week's announcements that Microsoft will be adding day one Xbox exclusives to their Game Pass subscription program, and now Xbox boss Phil Spencer is adding some of his thoughts about what this change could mean for gamers. According to him, it actually opens the door for unique new single player games. When a fan asked if Game Pass were merely a subscription service with great value or a means to fund new types of experiences, Spencer replied, I see XGP as both. The value is pretty obvious for some, and the idea of a new model that could open up opportunities for creativity is where I think we'll end up, especially for single player games. That's what the model has done for TV, but it's not an exact analogy. Come on, bring on the single player, bring on the experimental weird stuff. Netflix got really great when they started funding a bunch of original stuff. It's awesome now, people mostly watch it for original stuff. Persona 5 was one of last year's best reviewed titles, I mean, I wouldn't shut up about it, and is considered by some to be one of the best RPGs ever made. Unfortunately for many gamers out there, it was platform exclusive to PS4. However, Atlas is indicating that for the next entry in the series, they may consider new destinations to play the game. In their recent annual fan survey, the publisher asked Japanese gamers if they wanted to see Persona 6 on the PC and Switch, and also asked if gamers would prefer to see a Persona game in VR or on a smartphone. In addition to that, they asked if fans would be interested in Persona 3 or Persona 4 remakes, along with a number of potential Shin Megami Tensei remakes. Is there a way to just check yes to all these? Maybe if Alice just goes ahead and hires 500 people, we can have everything. But mostly, I would very much like Persona on the Switch and the PC. Thank you very much, Atlas. Get right on that. Last week, Ubisoft announced that ahead of Rainbow Six Siege's year three content, the game was going to be getting about $20 more expensive plus loot boxes. And as expected, after lots of fan outcry, they've promptly walked some of those changes back, which is actually really unusual in a company, so that's to be commended. The company responded to the outrage on Reddit, writing that in penance, they'll give all players a free Elite skin on March 6th, they're going to do work to fix the game's contentious starter pack, and they won't be increasing the price by $20. 
However, they're still gonna keep those pesky loot boxes, which some fans are still taking issue with. Part of that is because for so long, Rainbow Six Siege has been pointed to as an example among gamers about how to handle microtransactions in a multiplayer game. So, as you can imagine, the feedback is a bit split. We'll see how the loot box implementation affects the player base, if at all, in the coming weeks. After Epic hinted that they might be shying away from Paragon in order to focus on their now super popular Fortnite just a few weeks ago, well, it looks like Paragon is officially shutting down. Epic announced that support for the MOBA shooter will end as of April 26th. They write in a blog post, it's with heavy hearts we've decided to close down Paragon. After careful consideration and many difficult internal debates, we feel there isn't a clear path for us to grow Paragon into a MOBA that retains enough players to be sustainable. We didn't execute well enough to deliver on the promise of Paragon. We have failed you. Despite the team's incredibly hard work, and we're sorry. As such, they also wrote that they will be offering full refunds to anyone who spent any money on the game, regardless of platform, which stand-up thing for them to do considering the circumstances and probably funded by Daddy Fortnite, but it's regardless of who funds it, that's very unusual, very awesome, and it's interesting to see as we, again, get more digital, how companies will handle game shutdowns and what that means for us as gamers. Data miners dived into Sea of Thieves and have surfaced with some tasty tidbits about what's inside the upcoming pirate game. A Redditor named M4RX did some digging in the game's files, and while they didn't decrypt the actual assets, they still found some interesting information. And spoiler alert, we're gonna talk about a few of them. Probably the biggest is that we will see an appearance by the mythical sea creature, the Kraken, at some point in the game, which sounds amazing. Other enemies in the game include mermaids and skellies, that's separate, of course, from the sirens that are already there to get you back to your ship when you fall off. All that makes sense for a pirate game. We also learned about new weapons like the sniper rifle, the blunderbuss, which I'm assuming means that it's a different blunderbuss than what's in the beta, and heavy swords. So, yeah, sounds very cool so far. If you played the beta, it was actually quite a lot of fun, a little flat in terms of progression, but the developers did say that they've held a lot of uh, different elements back from the beta for the full launch. It's a lot of fun when you can get into it. Uh, see if these hits PC and Xbox One on March 20th. I'm super excited after that beta. The movie rental service Redbox is suing Disney, claiming that the House of Mouse plays dirty when it comes to selling movies. In the suit, Redbox claims that Disney tries to prevent it from selling Disney movies and even pressures distributors and retailers to not use the kiosk service. Disney's even sued to try and keep Redbox from selling digital downloads of its movies. In the suit, Redbox says, Disney baldly seeks to stifle competition and eliminate low-cost options in order to maximize the prices it and its retailers charge consumers. I mean, yeah, you remember the Disney vault? <laughs> also, couldn't Disney just buy Redbox? It probably has enough money just in the couch cushions for that one. But it's not honestly all that surprise of a move for Disney to try and stifle low-cost things. I mean, the whole point of the vault was so they could keep costs high. We've heard that a fifth Indiana Jones movie is coming, but now we've got a firmer timeline on when that's happening. The movie that reunites Harrison Ford and director Steven Spielberg will start shooting in 2019 with a release date of 2020. No word yet on the plot details or anything like that, but if those two are back on board, it's a good sign. I'm very excited about this one because there was, I heard they were gonna make a fourth movie. They were gonna call it Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, but then it didn't come out. But if it had come out, it would have got mixed reviews from critics and fans all the way back in 2008. I'm sorry, I like to pretend it doesn't exist, but it did make $786 million worldwide, which is a high for the franchise, T tragically. And uh, at the end of the day, money talks. I'm still really glad that Harrison Ford's coming back for it. A $400 million robbery occurred recently, but not at a bank. No, nope. hackers apparently stole a bunch of cryptocurrency from the Japanese exchange CoinCheck by exploiting a security breach. The hackers made off with a bunch of tokens from the currency known as NEM, and now the exchange has halted all withdrawals and trading until they can figure out what happened. NEM is the 10th largest cryptocurrency. I can't believe we have more than 10 to rank them, but we do, and its prices dropped more than 10% after the hack. Needless to say, this ranks up there with the biggest cryptocurrency thefts ever, and the co-founder of CoinCheck says they're trying to trace the funds to see if it's possible to recover them. Although, isn't one of the, the upsides of cryptocurrency theoretically that it's untraceable? Well, we'll see. 
Anyway, that's the news for this roundup. Let us know what you think of all these stories in the comments down below to make sure you get news from every corner of the internet every weekday, and that means a whole week ahead because it is Monday. Make sure you like this video. If you're new to this channel, subscribe to the know. Shout out to our sponsor, 1-800-Flowers. Valentine's Day is coming up and you can get a bouquet ordered and delivered without the bother of hitting up a store. Plus, getting it ordered early is good because prices usually go up closer to Valentine's Day, so get it out of the way and save the extra money for other things. 1-800-Flowers is offering a multicolored rose bouquet that looks beautiful and smells super nice. I love it when we get them here in the office. You can get one dozen for $19.99 or upgrade to a full two dozen roses for $10 more. The roses are picked at their peak and shipped overnight so they will be fresh and beautiful on the date that you want them delivered. Roses are kind of the classic Valentine's Day gift. They never go out of style. To order the dozen roses for $19.99 or two dozen for an additional $10, just hit up 1-800-Flowers.com slash no.